Hello everyone, welcome to today's video. Today I'll be going over my fourth round game from the 2022 Midwest Open. So the fourth round game for me was the match for third place. So if you didn't see the last video, I lost my semifinal match. Um, and so that put me into the third match or contention for third place match. And so my opponent is the loser of the other semifinal. Um, so the two winners went to the finals to play for first place, and the two losers of the semifinals played for third place. Um, and so my opponent, Alex Key, uh, I've actually played them before uh, during the online Go Congress, and they beat me pretty badly. So all I wanted was a better game than that one was my goal, although it would be nice to win and get third place. But my goal was simply to play a better game because that game I made a ton of mistakes, ended up dying, and it was no fun. Um, but yeah, also, the first day of the tournament, which was Saturday, we had three rounds. So this game was on actually during the next day, um, in the late morning, I believe. Um, so I had a full day of rest, a full day of contemplation for my first three rounds. Um, so yeah, I was feeling refreshed. Um, and yeah, and I am black in this game. And I do um, the same Joseki, or at least the same formation uh, that I did in the first game, or in the third round game, in the last video. Uh, I just really like it. I like being able to pincer here, which I did in the other round too. And... In the other game, my opponent did this one, which is a little old style. But in this game, my opponent does the more uh, modern uh, move here. So I back off. So again, the idea is even though white's getting some uh, strength here, it's not totally strong because it doesn't really have a base. Um, so white. But that being said, it's hard to find a good way to attack this. Because one, my stone is so far away, J17, um, and two, it's just a flexible shape. White can run out on the left, on the top, or even dive into the corner if they need to. So it's hard to attack this. So my opponent goes elsewhere. And just like in the other game, even though my opponent in the last round game uh, played a different Joe sticking up or left, they still ended up doing this one. So I Hane, of course, and then they cut, and this cut. I guess it's supposed to be the same as if um, they go here and this Joseki like this. I'm, I'm assuming it's going to be the same thing because I can still Atari and connect and then they can Atari here. And this sort of Joseki is 100% an AI Joseki. What, what you need to know is why it basically needs a ladder for this to be playable. Um, and I won't get into the you know the deep ins and outs of this but just know that it is considered okay for both sides uh, black cuts like this and so white's able to um, capture there and black takes the corner but you can see this direction switch for white is actually very good whereas if you tried to um, find a way to switch or try to f find a way to play a natural move on the right side it's actually pretty hard to find Maybe you shoulder hit, not sure. But this way, even though it is very crude and very direct, um, you can see white does uh, get the right side this way. Um, and also, you can see white has the ladder. Now, I could use this ladder um, immediately. Uh, white would fix somehow, and yeah, it'd be a different, it'd be a game. Also, I do not need to play in the corner. While it looks kind of dangerous, um, white descending and I descend, you can see white has three liberties and I have four. So even if white plays there, white can reduce a little, but I can still win the liberty race. So I can, I can ignore it at that point. But basically, this is what white wants. Um, I guess cutting forces this sequence, right? Or more likely forces this Joseki, whereas if you just do the double Hane... I can Atari here. And I guess white didn't want this variation, which kind of makes sense, especially with the stone up top. It's hard to get a lot of forcing moves up top. So white's trying to switch directions. But in the game, I um, I played this one. I'm actually not sure it's Joseki. 
it kind of turned into a Joseki's result, but I've never, or at least I can't remember ever seeing this move played. But I just wanted to maintain connection with my J17 stone. And yeah, I didn't want white to get so many forcing moves on the right side to um, get a good direction towards the lower right. White Ataris, and it goes there. And so I turn in the corner. Um, yeah, again, I don't actually know this is Joseki, so I actually don't know all the best falls. Maybe I should, can just Hane here. Um, because white is so low on liberties that white can't Hane. Because Atari, Atari, you can see like white's just in rough shape. Um, white would probably come down and I would come down or capture. But again, this feels okay for black, doesn't it? So, yeah, I'm not sure. Maybe I can just Hane. I don't, I don't know. I honestly do not know what white does here. Um, it looks pretty ugly for white. And again, white can't do anything in the corner because white gets captured. So I'm not, I'm not sure about this Joseki. But I just take the corner, white descends, so I cut. Again, this was a chance for me to Hane here. And I this doesn't look too bad for black, so maybe I should do this. Maybe I should do this. Um, but maybe white is okay because white is getting that direction switch that I was talking about with the other Joseki. But I just cut white Hanes. And I played this move. This move might look a little strange, but basically I have to protect the corner somehow. Um... White can descend here. Um, so, I have to fix somehow. Uh, if I just take and white um, fills here, and this is kind of what happened in the game, you can see later when I Hane, like white can just block and have no problems. But if I make the empty triangle, you can see that later I can Hane here. And if white blocks, you can see I've already fixed that weakness there. So it's trying to be um, multi-purpose. You'll see later that white can just resort it back to, or revert it back to uh, me not being able to do the Hane, but it meant white had to give up an extra stone. So I think it's okay. I think it's okay. But white didn't get the direction switch that white wanted, but white did get some strength and now goes after the, the upper side stone. And here I came up, I, I'm kind of regretting it after white. Um, yeah, even here, I think I should just turn the reason being is if white connects again because of this move that i played here i'm able to um threaten to connect under and this is taking out white's base which is very important as well um in the game when i haned when white descended of course now i have a weakness here and i can never really take out the base up top anymore so i think whether i do it here directly or push up once and then turn I think I should do something like this. Um, another possibility is the cut like this, but this would get uh, pretty complicated. Something like this. That's what I would imagine. Um, and yeah, you can see I'm fighting where white is stronger than I am. So starting a fight here, I felt wasn't um, very good. So I just went there. Right covers. So I fix, and usually you want to fix here. The reason why I did not is I wanted to prevent this double Hane. And if white just keeps pushing, this of course would be okay for black because eventually I can push here and cut. The problem for black though is after this turn here, or yeah, maybe white extends one, one more time. Not sure, but even if it happens here, white can block here. And even though I you know am out, white's able to get profit back by turning here. And this really hurts the upper left corner. So, yeah, maybe maybe it's okay. Because later I can, like, cut here. Nope, cut here. But the corner is in a lot of danger. Um, even if I make these exchanges first. Uh, maybe white goes there. Like, that really hurt the upper left corner. So even if I go to take this side... White can come and attack the left side, upper left. So it's a tricky call. It felt awkward, whatever I did. So that's why I even more wish that I had turned here. But I fixed like this. Again, now white can't double Hane. That's what I was trying to avoid. But later, white's able to take away my eye or my eye 
shape by going here. So right now it doesn't work, but eventually white can look to play there. White comes out, it's a very light move, and again, I really regret this decision of just taking the points in the corner. Oh, it's so slow. It's so slow. Now, where the benefit is, is it does force white to go here, but again, that's forcing white to play good shape against my weak group. So I, I would much rather prefer, if I wanted to play anywhere to help the upper left, to play a move like this. This is starting to, it's looking to cut white shape here, right? White has knight's moves, white has large knights, while taking the more important side of the left side. Because while the corner might be bigger on points, and that's even debatable, but while the corners are usually bigger on points, they usually don't affect the rest of the board. So I think, yeah, I should play a move like this, or, um, oops, or this one. Just something to get me out on the left side. When I go here, it forced white to go here, which is attacking my shape, of course. So I jump. And the idea with the jump is you'll see that it reverts to as if I had tarried first and then connected. The, the reason why you jump is that if white were to break your shape, quote unquote, is that this would actually be helping black shape and white hasn't actually fixed their shape. So this exchange, uh, is actually even though white broke black shape technically is actually better for black uh, white still has a cut black shape is solid here and if i get moves towards this side i'm able to run out into the center better while threatening that group so that's the idea is i as i actually want white to poke this and a lot of go is actually forcing your opponent to make exchanges that are good for you but of course in this case white can just connect and so i just so it ended up becoming the same thing as if I had tarred and made tiger's mouth but I made I had to make my opponent or I forced my opponent to have to make that decision first white jumps out and so I jump out and then white fixed the upper left so like at this point I'm feeling okay I have the two upper left corners I do have this weak group in the middle here but like white has some points on the upper side, but didn't really make any points on the upper left. So I was feeling okay, and I got Sente out of it. So at this point, I'm feeling okay. A much better game, so far at least, um, than the game I played with Alex during the uh, online Go Congress. So the fight died down, so I went elsewhere. Felt like a good extension from uh, my upper right. He backs off, and then we do this Joseki. And white chooses to just let me have the right side. Um, Playing this one would kind of be making it so the right side is easier to invade. Um, but white gets less thickness. So white decides, okay, I'm just going to get thickness, push you down a little bit, and then make a big extension there. And here, there's a lot of choices I could make. There's a lot, a lot of choices. But it was feeling like the bottom side would be bigger than the right. So, for example, if I just turn here and white does something like this, and even I have to add an extra move somewhere. I want to be greedy, but maybe I can't be. But something like this, it felt like white was getting more on the bottom side, even though the right side is pretty big. So I, I played this move. The idea with this move, and this is a good move to know, because this, this Joseki in the lower right comes up a lot nowadays. And so knowing how to not even attack it, but kind of knowing its like weakness or its weak spots is very good. So this move is very good because what is threatening is the kick. So if white pincer somehow, kick, and then jump, you can see white's base is very narrow and very over-concentrated, and white's going to have a bad time. So that's why white dove under. It might feel a little slack, but um, white's preventing the kick. As opposed to just descending, though, this would allow black to be able to get a base pretty easily on the bottom if if something like this were to happen just for example you can see how easy it is for black to make a base on the bottom and black could even kick first it doesn't like white's descent there doesn't prevent the kick and you can see um like black's bottom there while it's not 100 percent all blacks um it's still pretty relatively easy for black to come in so that's why, even though this is a second line move, it's preventing black from being able to make an easy base. And so I turn again. I still want to build the right side, but now maybe this exchange for M4 to M4, M2 is helpful now. And so white just takes a corner, sure. 
White says, Black, you're getting enough corners. I want a corner now. And so I attach, and then White connects, and then I jump. So here, yeah, here, this this felt so good in the game. Like, okay, I'm building my right side while I'm connecting back to the stones that were reducing White's bottom, and I'm attacking the lower right. But realistically, this isn't really attacking the lower right. The, the lower right is pretty strong, actually. Um, and two... While it feels like I'm building the right side, um, it's actually hard to hold everything. Um, so I think it's still better to just play something like this. And again, treat these two stones lightly. And hopefully I can make something with them. Uh, moves like that or even moves like this. Just something. No, even that feels a little too, like too much. And this is a big problem I have. is Because I, because I failed to count during my games... It's hard for me to decide whether or not keep continuing to build is a better strategy or just taking the right side as at this size is best. Um, because this is, again, more solid, but you're getting less. So it always feels better to try to make it as big as possible. But, of course, you can't always get it all. And, in fact, you'll see that the right side becomes white. So white, so white does a very nice sequence here. White jumps here. And... It's a hard call if this is Sente or not. Like, potentially, I could um, still ignore with something like this. And you can see the right side's pretty big. But this would leave my upper side um, to be left to attack. And you can see after this exchange here, it might look like I can push through and cut. But even though when I cut, because this hit the shape point, G17, White's able to connect under. And even if I struggle to live this way, White took all the top. So, it felt like I needed to play there. It felt like I needed to play. So I did. And the benefit of this move is it's also threatening to, um, if White goes elsewhere, it's also threatening to cut here. Which, um, you can see I'm able to connect up and make quite a few points in the upper left. It's not amazing, because it is only second line territory, but it does connect my groups. And, yeah, it's, it's not... It's not too, too small either. But timing would be important. Timing would be important. But then White jumps in. And you can see this combination White did with jumping first and then uh, playing here. You can see that because they're on the same line, they're very hard to disconnect. And after White went there, I couldn't find... Like, one, you, of course, try to cut this, right? So, shoulder hits. Anything like this is going to be too aggressive. Um... Like double Hane, you would like to, you would think you would like to do this, but it just does not work when there's this weakness at S14 as well. You can just see that White is, White is threatening to capture the three, threatening to capture this three, and again, since White is invading, White just needs something for this. White just needs something for this. And so, besides that, like there's no other great move. Like what I capped, well, White just could even go here, and again, maybe I can cut off this one stone, but then I leave the three to be attacked. And even this peep here doesn't really help with any of those uh, sequences. So it just, yeah, it just felt awkward. And I just couldn't find a good way to attack. And so even though I spent all these stones, right, I spent all these stones here building the right side, whereas white was taking solid cash in the lower left, white was able to basically just um, wipe it out immediately. And so what I did in the game was I played here because it, it, it was connected. And I was like, okay, if white, you know, got to move here, that area is looking a little big. But really, that's tiny. That is so tiny. The amount of points, one, I make with this is very small. And two, the amount I'm reducing is very small. All this did was it allowed white to fix. So I would should I at least just do something else and maybe the board changes. And then I can play more aggressively. But all I did was, remember, attack for profit, right? That's what I what like, you should always do. My profit here for attacking this white stone was Dame, basically. Again, I reduced white a little bit, but the amount white took away from me on the right side is, of course, much, much more. And after this, like, black is now falling behind. Black is now falling behind. Ever since the points I got in the upper right and the upper left, I've basically only gained a few points on the right side here. Whereas since then, white has gained basically this lower left quadrant, uh, which is huge. So I need to find something 
to to where I can gain points somewhere. Um, so I, I go after the lower right again. If I am going to spend all these stones here, I got to try to do something. And this move is what I was looking at when I attached at 04. Because if white tries to cut, I can clamp. I can clamp. If, if you just cut, white can pull back. And this ladder favors white. So you have to actually do the clamp. Where if white tries to block, you can capture. If white fixes though whether white fixes here or fixes here you can just uh, connect back and you can see 04 is on the perfect spot to make a, t a tiger's mouth but white knows that so white stands up and then cuts I can connect this is sente against the bottom so white fixes and then jump so again I'm trying to start a fight here um, because again I'm, I'm behind so I have to uh, try to make something with this stone at l4 but you can just see both of our shapes in this game are both pretty good you can see that our shapes are very there's it's hard to attack any of our shapes actually the problem is white is white shapes are a lot more efficient than mine like okay my shape in the upper left is pretty strong but it's not that big my shape in the upper side is strong but it's only worth like two points Whereas white shapes like on the right side here, white's using four stones here and is basically um, taking out the entire right side. Like that's very efficient. White's spending three stones here to capture the corner. So it's not a it's a difference between not shape because our sh both our shapes are pretty decent. It's a difference of efficiency. So white so far has just been a lot more efficient than black has. At least that's how I see it. Um, so white plays here. Yeah, this is a very elegant move. It's basically it's kind of like when I just jumped at h13. It's the same reasoning. White wants me to Atari either way because it hurts the other side of white. If I Atari here, it hurts these three stones here. If I Atari the other way, it hurts the bottom side stone. So instead, it just attach. Like. I don't even want to Atari that stone because it hurts either side. And that's that's how the saying usually goes. is If you can't capture an atari stone, or if you can't capture a cutting stone, don't Atari it. So that's what I did. And notice white stands up. And because I haven't atari it, if white were to stand up here, I could actually capture this. So that's why I was playing these attachments here. I was trying to get some forcing moves. One, to help my bottom, but also threatening to capture here. Of course, white knows that, and you can see, um, it's the same, again, it's the same, just like on the upper side, it would be the same as if this sort of thing happened, and then white jumped like this. So, a lot of the time, you'll get, you'll get the same ending result in these sort of scenarios, but it's still having to make black make the correct choice, which, again, mistakes can happen, so... It's still better for white to just leave that option on the table in case your opponent misplays. But you can see it becomes the same thing. And here, I just played there because it is the shape point and it does make me live um, automatically. But again, it's not efficient. So I have to do this Hane. So the reason why in the game... So, of course, I know the Hane and uh, play here. It helps my base. It means white's corner has more Aji in it because I've created a cut here at E3. But why didn't I do it? Because in the game, I saw white peeping here, and that was the extent of my runic. But of course, so if I connect here, which is what it's threatening, it's, it, white can capture on this side. And even if I give up, you know, two stones and get access into the corner, again, white has connected those cutting stones that I could technically attack, and I'm just getting second line territory. So that wouldn't be so good. But of course... When white peeps there, I can just block here. And white cannot cut here because white I have four liberties here and white has three. So I can win the semi-I. So, yeah, it's just very, very bad reading here, actually. All I saw was, oh, if I connect here, white can go there. And I was like, well, can't let white do that. So I just automatically just played here directly, which allowed white to play here. And you can feel the difference between that and and black getting that move. Because again, there's no cut there in the game. Yeah, look, there's no cut there in the game. And this move is Sente, so I have to push up anyways. 
and then white jumps. I save the three stones, and white jumps again. And then play here is a forcing move, and then descent. Yeah, I had to live. Um, if I do something else, uh, white can play the clamp here and take out the eye. And so I would be dead. Technically, I could run out, but there's not enough room there. So I descend here. It's a little more efficient as opposed to doing this one. Because this one is at least threatening to go into the bottom right. But regardless, it's still very inefficient. You can see, again, I've spent eight stones to make two points, basically. So, yeah, it's, this game is a story of efficiency, basically. Where, while I'm not dying anywhere, while our shapes are still good, why does just every exchange, why does just gaining a few points here and there? And by the end of the game, that's all you need. Like, white, at this point, is already way ahead. White is already way ahead. Just look, again, two points down here, maybe two points here, two points up here. So it's just since the beginning of the game when I had the upper left and upper right after the top happened, I have gained maybe 10 points, if that. Whereas white has gained everywhere. So, yeah, it's hard to really see where I went wrong um, going back through, but I think it was how I handled the right side. Uh, playing some slow moves like C17, and yeah, playing some, allowing white to get a strong shape up top, I think were the leading mistakes to this game going sour. But the game's not over yet. The game's not over yet. But again, white's able to play moves that are threatening my weak group. So this move here is threatening my group. So I have to, I first threaten the bottom right, and then jump across. White plays there, and then jump. So again, I have to. All the moves I'm playing are so inefficient. I'm spending so many moves to not even capture one point, whereas white's now getting points on the right side. White jumps. I break through. Again, white getting this move would be so big, but it's kind of, it's kind of me eye. So even if white got this one, I could still come in this way. Uh, although technically this move um, is sente, because I could die. So maybe I make that exchange first, and then I would um, play here. White could probably consider um, this sort of variation, but it is pretty difficult for white to hold everything. Although I think even if white gives me these stones here, like it's enough. If white just takes the left side, you can see how big that is. But white calmly just jumps, so then I'm able to go there. So white plays here. I again have to again all of my moves I'm playing are so small in points where all the moves white's playing are just bigger. So if every move, you're playing a two-point move and your opponent's playing a one-point move, you're just going to gain every exchange. And that's kind of the story of this game so far. So white plays there. Yeah, it's so calm. So, so, so calm. So I jump. Again, looking at the right side there. We, we have some weird exchanges here. So I peep there. White pushes. And then I hane. And the idea with this hane is later, while white's trying to push up my eye, these stones are important because they're uh, threatening to capture me. But Hane first, now white's more invested in those stones, and now when I fill, you can see I've created a weakness at M, M7. If I don't make that exchange and I just connect, if white goes elsewhere, when white peeps, white could simply just... Um, I guess it would be, be very similar, right? Yeah, I would still be able to cut that. So yeah, maybe, maybe it's not so good, because actually I'd rather be able to... I'd actually want to cut off these... Uh, two stones here but i don't think it it hurts that much i don't think it hurts that much because i'm still threatening uh that peep there basically so that's why white connected and then again i gotta live i gotta live here so i play there again not happy with playing this move but it's just uh, it's just so many small moves by black basically white descends. so this is white um preventing that Hane, which again, I played this move Q18 early on to get this Hane, and I never had the chance to do it. And I feel like a lot of chance, especially after I jump here, I could have Hane, but I just didn't get to it. And so the point of this move is if I descend, now white can Atari, which is what happens in the game. If white tries to do this out of orders, um, oops, if white tries to do this out of order, this, like this, when white descends that's an atari but now when white turns this is sente but you can see now i have an eye if i try to play the same move in the game like this now when white turns i don't have an eye 
and this is Sente, and then white could win the semi here. So order of moves here does matter, and so playing here first means you don't give me an eye. And yep, and the, the purpose of this exchange is later, if I play here, white can simply go do this one, and there's no problems because it's an Atari, but without that exchange, while white can block, you can see now maybe I can clamp, maybe I can peep, so it's not as easy for white. So that's why it's a good exchange. White goes there now. Yeah, now that white has played um, the upper right Aji, now white does this. This is a very good timing. Again, if white had done this earlier before the upper right, like let's say white did this now, um, and then tried to do, use the same Aji, again, the, the key is that this turn is Sente. Because if this turn is in Sente, white doesn't have enough liberties. But because this kick here would reduce the liberties here, that wouldn't be Sente, so black could just ignore them. So this is a very good example of order of moves, and that's why way back here, white didn't do anything super fast, right? Like white could have played this kind of move or this kind of move, which is going to help white solidify the right side quicker, but again, it loses that Aji. So again, white's playing a slower move to get more in the upper right. So yeah, very, very nice sequence there. And then now they kick, and now peep, and then cap. So again, you can see white shapes, like, white shapes have no problems. And again, technically my shapes have no problems either, but it's a matter of efficiency. White shapes are just much more efficient. And so here, if I just kick, that'd be okay, but white doesn't need to answer locally. And yeah, like, it just isn't as good. And... If I do this directly, if white goes this way, this would be what I want, because now I'm threatening to cut at e18 or connect. But white can go this way, and you can see this cut doesn't really do anything, because I, can, I can't squeeze anymore, so that's why that diagonal by white is very big. So in the game, I actually attach here. And the point of the attachment is, if white captures, which is again, well, what I kind of want, is now I can play here. So regardless of whichever way white blocks, this is now an Atari. If white has to take, then I can cut white off like that. And same thing if white goes the other way. It'll be an Atari. And same same thing. So that's why in the game white does connect, but then I've, I was able to make my base even slightly bigger. Even slightly bigger. White descends. And again, this is a nice um, use of Sente. So if you just, if you Hane, even though you reduce black a little bit more, you give black good shape, and black technically isn't 100% alive, but assume black answers, black's shape is now 100% alive. So instead, when you descend, even if black descends, black isn't 100% alive, and later you'll see white, um, I, I, make, I make an eye here first, you'll see that white can jump instead of just turning. So, yep, so again, very, I have two points down here, three points down here, three points here, two points here, three points here. Like, I guess just, I have so many groups and they all got cut up into very small points. So it's just, it's just a very difficult game for black. And white's just able to reduce. So I won't drag this on any longer. There is one final, I'll say gambit <laughs> that happens. Um, this moves a little strange. The idea is I'm looking, because I am behind, I'm looking to... Um, Hane here, or play at the shape points here, um, as opposed to doing this one, which does keep more of the corner. I was trying to threaten the outside a little bit more. Went there, white Ataris and peeps, and then white extends more, so white may be a little bit smaller, and then goes there. So yeah, I I've got to do something now, basically. So extend, so again, I'm looking at the weakness there, so I attach, white fixes, and then push, and then cut. Um, so one, I kind of went by it quickly, but I think I should just cut directly like this. You can, yeah, I, I should just cut. If I want to cut, I should just cut directly. I shouldn't threaten first and help white's uh, base there. And also later, like you can see I cut. I would never play this move after that, right? I would never cut and then play the empty triangle. So you can see this, this stone at M15, is in a very bad spot but so 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 i'm looking at the 
upper side, so white fixes. And then the last chance for black is I'm looking, can I cut off the middle here from the right side and maybe capture four stones or capture the right side? So I go and I connect here, white saves, and then I jump here. So again, I'm looking to Hane here. I'm looking to cut off the right side because this is the final chance I have. I can't make any more points. I can't reduce the left, lower left anymore. So this is it. Can I do something here? White peeps. And again, if I just connect somehow and white, you know, peeps or something and then connects, no problems. No problems for white. So I have to do something a little more aggressive. So I peep. White just pushes and cuts though. And the, the problem for black is even if I can cut off the stone at 011, I'm now giving up a lot with the four stones. So for example, if I... Let's see, just uh, let's say I do this, which is what I did in the game, and white blocks, and I just, um, well, and then I block. Again, I'm trying to take away liberties, and white cuts. So even if I, yeah, it's just, it's just no good way to do it. But if I go here, white can peep here, because white needs to answer locally, because then white gets, um, actually dies here, it's low on liberty. So white has to peep here. And I would like to be able to push here, but the problem is Atari once and then connect and then connect. And the problem with this connection is white, after this peep, white's threatening to push through here and threatening to live. So if I go here, white could then live. So that doesn't work. If I just Hane here, this is probably Black's best chance where I can do the squeeze here. Again, I can't cut anymore because of this Atari first. And so if this happens, you can see white could connect back. And because white cut off the four stones, white has no problems living. If I instead, when white Atari's, because white has to Atari first. If white just blocks, white runs out of liberties. So if white cuts first, I can technically connect. And if white takes, you can see I can actually threaten to... Like, I can keep white separated while playing this move, but it's just not enough. White can still live uh, by going here. White shape is just too good there. So that doesn't work. Um, but I can look to the left side, but there's actually just no move that works. Um, this attachment is probably the best idea, but white just hanes, and there's just no, no hope. Uh, if I extend back, white connects. If I... Hane here, white still just pulls back, and if I cut, um, yeah, like, there's no way for me to capture this stone here. And white can, white is connecting back anyway, so, yeah, just nothing quite works. So in the game, I just pushed here, white atari and then peeped. So again, it's the same sort of thing that I was showing, just a little out of order. So then I jump in, but white Atari's. And I cut, trying to make things exciting, but then white um, just fills, and then I resigned here. So I ended up losing the third place match, uh, so I ended up getting fourth place in the tournament. Um, but yeah, com one, compared to my last game with Alex, I think it was either the last Online Go Congress or the one before that. So it was either 2021 or 2020. Um... I played a much better game, so I was at least happy with that. Um, and two, while my moves were pretty slow and got inefficient, I think that's more to Alex's credit than my discredit. At least I would like to think that. Um, so I was a lot happier with the game compared to my third round game where I just tried to kill everything. I was at least trying to play a more calm game, um, so I was at least happy with that. Um, but yeah, so I ended up getting a third place, or not third place, I wish, but I ended up getting a fourth place in the event, and yeah, it was a really fun event. I want to uh, thank Devin Fraze, of course, for putting together uh, the Midwest Open. His tournaments are always top-notch, so I always enjoy being able to go to them, and I also want to shout out Devin for allowing me to be part of this thing called the Baduke House Residency Program, where Devin is housing... Uh, six other uh, avid Go players and are just trying to help and promote Go. And so I want to also thank 
my fellow residents for helping organize the event, set up the event, and all that. Uh, but yeah, it was a super fun event. I can't wait for the next one. And I'm <laughs> maybe I'm not the happiest with my play, but if you consider I did have to set up part of the event, uh, getting there early, um, staying late to clean up, you know, maybe my play wasn't so bad after all. Uh, but yeah, uh, if you have any questions about this game, please let me know. I'll also, if I remember, and I should remember, but um, I should also have a AGA article on the event in the description, so look forward to that. Um, but yeah, if you have any questions about this game or any of my games, uh, please let me know in the comments, and I will see you all in the next video.